Yes, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, glad to have you on this call. This is one opportunity that in our hands, the vehicle will be using to raise millionaires in their numbers. Uh, I'm so excited, me fully well, that uh, lives are being transformed. I'm so excited that the coins we, we purchased are giving us massive profit, friends. Massive profit. Okay, I, I dropped uh, a call um, yesterday. Okay, how a particular coin that uh, Rudo, whom we have on the call right now, Rudo and his team were master trade. They called the the, uh, 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 the mage. All right, on a particular coin, gave over a hundred percent in seven days. Why I was still on that, someone sent me a message yesterday. He said, what do you mean? I got 100% in 24 hours on, the same, on, on, on a different coin called by the same master trade. Friends, we have the expert in the house who will guide us how he has been doing it. Of course, with his teammates talking about the master trade. Friends, it is time. It is time for you to take power in your hands for you to take that power, maximize, grow your money, manage your money. Why is your custody and watch it grow, watch it soar into prosperity? All right, so welcome and welcome once again. Uh, this time I want to hand everyone to Rudo, okay, who will take us and take us from where we are now to where we really want to be. Rudo, are you there? If you are there, please take it from there. Thanks, Edward. I, good evening, guys. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, a bit of a lesson today. And uh, I want to ask everybody, um, you know, one thing that we always say uh, when we look at the markets, and please excuse me for not having a camera. I knocked the thing off and it's broken. So I ordered a new one and it will be arriving soon. Um, so why, um, you know, what is the main thing that we always want to look at in the markets is when we, we, were, we will always want to be looking at strength and weakness. That's the big thing. You know, if it gets weak, what does it mean for us? You know, uh, price might reverse. If it gets strong, what does it mean? You know, price can start moving up. Now, I want to ask you guys to, in the chat, just give me a quick workout. What do you um c as strength in uh, a, uh in a specific movement maybe you can just quickly write there it should not be a difficult question something simple what do you see as strength now what we have over here is we've got a, a bitcoin chart and we're on the six hour and we're looking at bitcoin from the 7th of december when it was roughly about ten thousand dollars per coin up to where we're at now at $45,000, $48,000. So anybody have an idea of what do we use to determine whether the market is strong? Or any one of you guys, um, well, let's let's leave it at that. Okay, I don't see, I'm not getting a lot of, um, lot of comments on that. So now I'm going to ask you guys um, a question. And do you guys, well, the green is probably one way to look at it. Uh, but that doesn't, does not necessarily mean that. And I'm going to show you guys why. So firstly, what do we need to know before we can govern the power of strength or weakness? And secondly, um, if we can identify whether the market is gaining strength or getting weaker, will that help you become more profitable traders? If so, give me a triple nine in the chat. Let's see if I at least, uh, if it is working. Which you guys really would want to know if if the market is getting stronger or weaker? Give me a nine in the chat. Let's see if this chat is working. One triple nine. There we go, Nathan Thompson. Thanks, guys. It helps. Then I know I'm not talking to myself. I want you guys to interact. It's very important. Um, Okay, guys, so the triple nines are coming through. Great. So first thing that we need to know when, when the market is getting stronger or weakness is the difference between an impulse and a correction. Uh, now, an impulse, there's three factors that we need to consider whether uh, a coin is in an impulse, three of them. 
Number one, firstly, an impulse, and this is the way you're going to identify it. There's three key factors that we need to think. First is an impulse will have similar candle body sizes and similar color. Now let's zoom in on an impulse and let's see if we can find areas where there would be a probable impulse just on that first thing, similar colors. So there we would probably be able to see that there's an impulse. Let's maybe mark a few areas. I know it's very small, but what I'm trying to just look at is the few areas and then we can go and study them as we move on. So now we've got a few areas where we can see that the first characteristic of an impulse. Okay. The second thing that we need to know, and let's zoom in. The second thing is that an impulse has got bigger candle bodies. So the second thing, bigger candle bodies than the surrounding candles, which means if we now go and have a look at our impulses, let's see if we, uh, identified them correctly. So I'm going to move to this area over here. And as we look at this little green zone over here, let me just make this an imbalance uh, or maybe a interest zone. That would be better. So if you look at this, as you can see, the average candle body height that we have, and let me just move my drawing tools closer. This will speed up. So if you look at the average candle body height, it's fairly small. But once we moved into this impulse, you can see the candle bodies get bigger. Okay. And then lastly, what I want to do is I want to show you uh, the, the, the closes. Okay. So the third thing that we need to know with uh, uh, impulses, you'll see that when we look at the bottom of that candle itself, let's clear my drawings and let's zoom in on, that, on this impulse that we've got here you'll see that on an average that there is more flat-bottomed candles than large wicked candles. And as, I see I've moved my screen, flat bottoms, then large wicks. You can see the wicks are very small in relation to the bottoms. And as our impulse is getting weaker, we start getting these big candle wicks. So now we know that once we have flat bottom candles or very small wicks, that once price jumped past this level, it had very little resistance in the means of how up until we got to this area, this would be my first sign of weakness, knowing that the impulse is getting weaker. Makes sense. So guys, with this being said, these are three ways that we can identify an impulse. So let's write them down in this box over here. So the first thing is to identify an impulse is what? Similar color. There we go. Similar color candles. This is a US. Let's put it like that. Okay. Second thing that we want to see is what was the second one larger bodies than than the candles around them okay and then the third thing is flat bottoms in the impulse direction. Okay, Edward, unmute yourself there, buddy. Yes, I'm here. Okay, right, now I wanna ask you, identifying candles with similar colors, groups of candles with similar colors, that's easy. Yeah. Okay, yeah. looking for a group of candles that's got larger bodies than the candles around them. That's easy as well, am I right? Very correct. Okay. Thirdly, identifying candles where there's very little wicks to the downside. That's just as easy. True. Okay. So why do we make trading so hard on ourselves? Honestly. Because if you look for these three things, immediately you'll know whether the market is trending strong or whether it's trending weak. Isn't that true? Very okay. true. Very now, 
if we want to know whether the market's turning against us, so so this would be an idea that there's a strong movement. That's easier said than done. This does not give you an entry signal just yet, but let's first just understand what we're looking at. So if you can see this as a strong movement to the upside, what would be the the imp, the the factors because there's three of them for an impulse i've marked them one two three similar colors large bodies flat bottoms what would you think would be the the other side the correction what would be the three rules that we have to consider then it is literally the opposite edward so if you think about it what would be the opposite of similar color candles Of course, different color candles. Disjointed. There, there's a blend of different color candles. Yeah. So that would be a correction. Yeah. Okay. What is the opposite of larger bodies? Small random Smaller bodies. Body. Sure. So there you can see that. And then do we have flat bottoms in the in the direction? No, we've no. got no flat Opposite. bottoms. Do you get anything that looks remotely like this in this area over here? No, no. No. Now we know we've got a correction. So firstly, what do we need to know? Now, because we know what is the difference between an impulse and a correction, we will be able to understand what a wave would do. Does that make sense? And we all know that the market trades in waves. Isn't that true? So let's zoom out a little bit. And I'm, for this exercise, I'm just going to flip to the line tool because it's just going to make things a little easier for us to understand the way that price moves. So if we're looking at a wave, on various time frames, you can argue that this is a wave down. You can say wave down, wave, small correction, and then another wave. Okay, so realistically, we can look at these areas and know that the market will always move in waves. We know what are the two things that the market can always do. Edward, you should be able to answer this. What are the two things that the market always does? Impulse and correction. It goes up or it goes down. It never stays in one area. That's the one thing. Why is that? Because there's always a tug of war. Okay. So now that we know what's the difference between an impulse and we know what's the difference between a correction, what do we want to trade? Edward, what would you want to be? Where would you want to be in the market? And where would you want to preferably be out of the market? Well, getting into the market after the correction. Yes, you want to get into that impulse. Yes, after the correction. Because does a trader get paid by the hour? Or does a trader get paid by the trade? And if we think about it in that way, let's move back to the candles over here. If you look at this amount of days that we've been in here, been trading this area, if you want to be trading, I would rather want to be trading those four days because look at the gains. On that four days, my gains would be about 17%. But if I was trading the previous, let's say, two weeks before that, start there up to that area, there's roughly nine days. What would have been my gains? If I took the low and I got out at the, bot, at the top, roughly over there. That would have been 6%. So if I'm a trader and I'm not investing, I'm now bouncing between coins looking for the best opportunities to make money. Would I be interested in this area over here? Or would I be looking for coins that's creating this area with a pinch point so that I can get in on this? And then once it starts moving sideways, I'm out. This coin is dead to me. I'll look at it once I know that we're going to be getting a new impulse. Makes sense. So now I don't have money sitting in a coin doing nothing. Who of you guys have had that and experienced the frustration of having money sitting in a coin doing nothing? Maybe give me a seven in the chat if you've done that. Yes, it's frustrating. Everything around you seems to be moving, but except the coin you're in. True. <laughs> that is because what are you doing? You're sitting in a correction. We do not want to trade corrections because corrections is where the public, me and you, fight over the coin's estimated value. An impulse is where the large traders decide that this is not cheap enough and they're going to push the price back up. 
So if we want to be trading from now on, where do we want to be trading? Do we want to be one for an impulse? So give me a one for an impulse. Or if we want to be trading, give me a seven for a correction. Where would we want to be trading? One is if I want to be trading the impulses. Two, if I want to be trading the corrections. Where would you want to have your money in? Nathan, well done. Yes, it's a one. We do not want to be in a correction because a correction can take forever. And we've got a lot of evidence on exactly just that. Let's zoom out a little bit. And let me show you the scale and time of a correction. If we look at Bitcoin on a larger time frame, we start flipping into the weekly perspective as an investor. Looking at this area. And I'm just going to delete these blocks because I think we've got the gist of, of what is a correction and an impulse. I'm going to ask you guys to just tell me one for a correction. So I'm just going to write here. One for a correction and make it six for an impulse. Okay. One is for a correction, six is for an impulse. What would you say this is? A correction or an impulse? Come on, Edward, you can go first there, buddy. I think you're done. If you look at this block that I've got marked up here on the screen. Yeah. Should I maybe zoom in a little bit? There I'm getting the I'm getting a couple of answers there. So I'm just going to zoom in there for you guys. Okay. So what have we learned now? A correction and impulse. I would say that is a number 1 and the correction I would say that's a number 6. That's now I'm going to ask you this box. What's happening in this box? Would it be that of a correction of that or that of an impulse? Oh, Remember? Correct. Correction one. Impulse is one, correction is six. Yes. Which means what? If you stay in a correction, are you really making a lot of gains for the amount of time that you were sitting in that? Of course not. No. Nope. Yes. Nope. Nope. Because then if you think correction. about it, yeah, if I bought there six months, seven months later, I'm still at break even. If I bought there, I'm almost at break even. If I bought there, I'm at break even over here. So you're not really getting anywhere. And this is a correction. This is where the public fights over price. Now, yes, if we zoom this in a smaller time frames, there will be impulses and corrections and large gains to be had. But just looking at the bay, where would you rather want to have bought Bitcoin? Here, waiting two years to get to this zone? Or would you rather want to put money in Bitcoin over here and experience this? Yes. Okay. Now, there's a way that we can measure this. And this is what I want to get to. Because what do we want to do when we trade? Now that we understand what is a correction or what is a, an impulse, we can now start looking at how to measure whether the market is strong or weak. What does a strong market mean, Edward? What's the price going to do? Go bullish. It's going to go up. And a yes. weak market... For down bearish. Yes. So if we know whether the market is strong, will we be able to do good trades? And if we know whether the market is weak, would you be able to take that profit? Huh? Difficult. When market okay, is weak. right. Yes. So if the market is strong, you know you can stay in it. And if the market is weak, you know you can get out of it because you're going to get another entry. So that's a simple simple solution to what is probably the hardest thing about trading. Am I right there, guys? True. Okay, so now how do we measure this? We measure it using three tools. Now, over time, it becomes easy. So you're going to measure it just using your eyes. But for now, I'm just going to explain you guys what you need to start looking through. So we've got the, everybody on the score. How many people? We've got 51 people. Do you understand the difference between impulse and correction? Can we move on? Give me a hell yes in the chat. If you understand it, let's see how many people grasp the difference between the impulse and the correction now. So Edward, yes. Great. Nathan's got a yes. Heaven, yes. There we go. The yeses are coming. Great. So I think overwhelmingly uh, we can got it. Thompson, not totally. So I'm going to ask you again, what is the three things we need to see? to know whether it's a correction or an impulse. An impulse has what? 
similar color candles, be it up or down. So where do we see the similar color candles? We see them over here. You're in agreement with me, Thompson. Give me a, a, a yes or a no. Yes. Okay. Second thing we want to see. The candles need to be bigger than the previous candles. Is these candles bigger than the candles that preceded them? Yes or no, Thompson? Bigger. Yes. So now we know the second thing. The third thing, what do we need? We want to see flat bottoms if it's going up. And we want to see flat tops if it's going down. What does that mean? It means strength. Do we see a lot of flat or small wick bottom candles over here? Yes or no, Thompson? Looking at this, I'm going to zoom in. How many flat bottoms do you get? Look at that weekly. From entry, it never went down. Look at those flat bottoms. Flat bottoms. Flattish bottoms. Okay, so now we know what is that what we need. Now, an impulse is the opposite. It's completely the different. You're not going to get flat bottoms. You're not going to get large green candles for following each other. And you're not going to have the candle bodies bigger than the, the, than the previous one. They're going to be random or messy. Does that make sense, Thompson? So an impulse, beautiful green candles in the upside direction. And a correction is mess. How do you trade mess? Is it easy to trade mess? Difficult. Very difficult. So let's avoid it. We are traders. Why do we have to go and meddle in areas where we struggle? So if this was a daily or an hourly or even a five-minute chart, this area, I wouldn't touch it. I would want to see the volume go low. And I've, we've got all these strategies that can help you get to that point knowing that, hey, the impulse is coming. But up until then, I'm not sitting in this coin because a lot can go wrong. I want to get in there and then I want to start taking profit when I see the weakness when I see the opposite of what is happening starts appearing. So do we see a sign of weakness over here? Do we see signs of weakness in Bitcoin happening? Yes or no? Yes, Edward, you're pointing yes there, buddy. So does this mean that at some stage we maybe need to come and correct to the downside? Yes. Sadly, there's no time clock that's ticking telling you exactly when it's going to happen. You're just going to have to be ready for it. That's the harshness about the market. Okay, so now everybody knows the difference between an impulse and a correction. Uh, is it safe for me to move on? Let's see. Give me a yes there. Let's just make sure, Thompson. You good there? Great, buddy. Okay, so now that we know the difference between an impulse and a correction, we can start measuring and looking at candles. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at this area because there's a lot of volatility there. So I'm just going to zoom into the four hour and we're going to start examining those candles. And this is how I knew this morning at 2.30 to get out of the market. And look at what we had. We had this big jump down. Now, big picture wise, it doesn't look that crazy, but that was a 6% drop. And on most of the alts, how many, how, what was the gain, the losses this morning? 20%, 18%, some of them went crazy. Okay, so how do we measure this? First thing we do, we measure it using the speed. Now, how do we measure speed? This is the easiest thing around this. Everybody's got a trading view account. What I want you guys to do is literally just take the line tool on your trading view. There it is, trend line tool. Got it? Now I click on it, and then I just click on the first bottom to the next bottom. And then I use it again. Let's keep it in there. Let's quickly measure the speed. And I want to show you something very fu uh, fundamental about trading. I'm just going to lock the drawing tool. So there's another one. There's one over there. There's one over there. There's one over there. And you can just click to the bottoms. Okay, so now we've got all these lines. Just put it like that. Okay, now we've got all these lines. The steeper the angle, remember now this is zero degrees. Who's gone, uh, what, what's a trigonometry in, in maths? This is roughly 45 degrees. And then you've got a 90 degree. 
Uh, oh, my 45 degrees looks a little crooked. That's roughly maybe a 45. This will most probably be a 30 degree. Okay. Understand the idea between degrees. Now, there's no hard rule around this. Edward, you grasp it. You've got it. You're with me, buddy. Very well. Please okay. Me. So now, the steeper the angle, this being zero, that being steeper, it means the market has got more speed. Simple put as that. Okay. So if you're looking at the market, we are speeding up, speeding up. And then what were we doing? We were slowing down. And as you can see, as you look at this, and you can even take it in smaller detail. Let me just get a better line there. When you start drawing your trend lines, and your trend line is steep like that, does that show a high speed or a low speed? Edward, answer me there, Low buddy. speed, low speed. No, high speed. Okay, streets, remember, streets, yes, yeah, streets. The higher the angle, remember, yeah. the bigger the angle. Let me just get my drawing tool. If that line was in, in, this, in the yellow line, that's zero degrees. Zero. That's no speed, okay? Yes. But 90 degrees is as fast as it can possibly go, okay? So this line, would it be high speed or low speed? High speed. Okay, so this line is high speed. High speed, yes. Okay, this projection down, is that high speed or low speed? Same, high speed. High speed, yes. But when we start getting these double bottoms like that like that are we slowing down look at this we were moving horizontal in a way okay we were slowing down low speed okay yeah. so what do we want to know if the angle is high something like that that's a high speed that is signifying strength if the angle is flat look at this area over here you can look at that that weakness. is a slow speed that is weakness. signifying weakness okay but you can't just use this. This is your first thing. Okay. High angles, high speed, strength. Great. Low angles, low speed, weakness. weakness. Everybody with me there? Give me a yes in the chat. High angle, high speed. Low angle, low speed. Okay, great. Simple. Now you can dive in whichever time frame you want to do. So what we might, what we might do is when we're on, on one of our master trade webinars, what we do is we say, right, guys, the market's getting weaker and uh, I think we need to maybe start thinking about taking profit. And then everybody just decides, okay, let's start selling. And then tomorrow the market changed. And that's how we look at it. We literally just draw those lines and understand we can see it now, whether the market is speeding up or it is slowing down. Second thing. Now, this is where it comes becomes a little bit more tricky. This is called projection. Now, for projection... What I want you guys to look at uh, is the tops. So well then, Edward, high angle, high speed, low angle, low speed. The top one would signify strength and the low one would signify weakness. Now I've deleted my text box. Let's just bring that back. Okay. Now the second thing I want you guys to remember is projection. And this is now how we're gonna measure it. Look at the tops. So now what we can do is we can literally just mark them with this little cokey of mine. So I'm going to mark the top there. There's a top there. There's a top there. There, there, and there. And there's another top there. Let's mark that. So let's look at this area. Everybody can see my screen clearly enough. Give me a, a yes in the chat. Alternatively, let me know with a no, then I'll zoom in. Yeah, you can, you can zoom in. But don't work Okay, should I zoom in a little bit? Okay. So I'm just going to clear this again, and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit there on that. Okay. Well, now we've got it a little bit bigger. Everybody can see that. So now yet again, I'm just going to mark them. I'm looking at these stops. Okay. Now we are looking at projection. Okay, the second one. So the first one, we looked at the, the line. We drew the line, and we saw whether it was high speed, low speed. Now we're going to look at projection. How do we do that? I'm going to take the top from – I'm going to take the bottom from the first one. I'm going to measure to the top. I'm just going to draw it like this, and I'm going to call that – maybe maybe that is an X, size X. And then what do we do? I'm going to take the bottom over here, and I'm going to measure that top. 
Would you say this is bigger or smaller in distance? The second one is bigger or, or smaller in distance than this than the first one? Small, smaller. Number smaller. Seven, number two is smaller. Yeah. Yes. So what does that show to me? Remember now, I'm drawing my line. I now know where's the impulse. I know where's the correction. I know where's the impulse. I know where's the correction. Okay. So if I do this, what does that show me? If I look at this one and that one, is that one bigger than all of them? Yes. Okay. So yeah, the market was strong. There it got weaker. Is that a good time to be trading when it's getting weaker? No. No. Yeah, the market got even stronger. So the projection is bigger. Okay. So what do we do? We measure the distance between these. So if I now take the stop, boom, and I take that top and I take that top and I start measuring them, drawing my lines. If you look at this now, this is, this is one, this is two. Is the market getting stronger or is the market getting weaker? What is happening between these distances? They'll be getting bigger. Am I right? Yes. So is the market getting stronger or is the market getting weaker? Getting stronger. Getting stronger. So now what do we have? We know we've got impulses forming. We see that the, the, the impulses get getting more aggressive and the distance is getting bigger on the projection. So the market's getting stronger. Is it a good time to then be entering this thing on a pullback? Yes. Because if the market is showing me it's getting stronger, that's when we went to enter. Master trades, we called the buy right there. That's our buy. Now, if you bought there, would you be happy sitting in Bitcoin at the moment? What did everybody else see? They saw negativity, up, down, up, down, craziness. What did I see? I saw that the market's getting stronger. Good time to buy. Understand me? Everybody with me? Yes. Okay, now yet again, depth is just the opposite. So let's just clear all, all this. So now you can measure. Now let's quickly look to the top. Look at this area over here. I'm just going to draw those lines there. Uh, draw them nice and straight. If you're looking at this, what happened there? Did the market get stronger or did the market get weaker? Stronger. No, this is the big um, one. Then drop. Smaller, it's smaller. Weaker. It's getting weaker. No, no, it's getting weaker. Okay. Remember now, we're measuring these areas. We're measuring from the low to the high. Boom, boom, boom. High. See what is happening. Okay. So is this growing or is this shrinking? So we got small one, we had a bigger one, we've got a smaller one. So what are we doing? The market's getting weaker because we're getting smaller ones. This is even smaller. Am I right? True. So the market's getting weaker. Now I'm taking the tops. I'm putting the tops over. What am I getting? The distance, the growth, the momentum is going away. The market's getting weaker. It's time to get out, guys. You can wait for either another big move and then the retrace you buy because then you know the market's getting stronger. Okay. So now the opposite is depth. Exactly the same way. Now we're just going to look at, at the bottoms. So we can measure it in the same way. Remember now, you can draw these lines in. You now know what is the difference between an impulse and a correction. Because that's what you need to identify first. Impulse or correction. Draw in your lines. Then you go and measure them. Now we're looking at the bottoms. So from there to there and from there to there. Is this thing getting stronger to the downside or weaker to the downside? Remember now, I'm measuring from there to there. I'm measuring from there to there. And I'm measuring from there to there. Okay? So is this thing getting stronger to the downside or weaker? Weaker downside, but it's stronger. Weaker. Way. It's very hard to see because they're almost the same. But what did we get to the high side? We got we got the, that that it was moving higher. Okay. But to the downside. No, 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 Dr. Ibram. You just need to keep doing this. If you keep doing this, you're gonna start getting this. Simply put, go watch the recording, play it through, play it through. It's repetition. It's like I'm just trying to learn to play a musical instrument in one sitting. You'll never be able to do it. 
So if you want to learn how to become a good trader, for some reason, people want to be a good trader, but I want one lesson. And then I want to go away and make good money. Okay. Doesn't, doesn't work that way. You have to keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. I promise you, this is the key to what you need. If you be consistent about it, I promise you, you can make the market your own ATM. Realistically. So if we look at this, now let's quickly draw these lines. And this is the simplest test. Okay. Would you say the market is getting stronger or weaker? We had a small one. We've got a bigger one. We're moving to the upside. Is it getting stronger or weaker? Edward, have I lost you there, buddy? Stronger or weaker? Sorry, I'll try to respond to someone in the chats. Go ahead. Okay. Stronger. Right, guys. So let's make it simple. And let's just sit with one measurement now. What do we want to do? We want to look at the bottoms and we want to see that the angles are getting higher and steeper. If the angles are getting steeper, we know the market's getting stronger. Secondly, we want to draw lines from the tops. Okay. And if the distance is getting bigger, what does that mean? It's getting stronger. It's stronger. Okay. Yes. If the distance is the same, wait, maybe have a look. It's getting weak. We have to go and check. Okay. Mm. But we don't just look at the tops. What do we do? We look at the bottoms as well because the bottoms tells us what is the impulse or the correction doing because you've got two movements, isn't that? So we'll measure the tops and the bottoms. So looking at these tops, they are growing. So let's maybe clear the screen. One last time, work through this. I'm going to use yellow for the tops. So there we had a top. There we had another top. There we had a top. And I'm just going to use that one as well. And that one over there. So the market was getting stronger over here. Everybody's in agreement. Yes. Yes, it's not really difficult. It just need time. Well said there. Okay. Now let's use a different color. Let's use blue. If I'm looking at the bottoms. Is the market getting stronger or weaker? Weaker or shorter. So there we had a weak correction. So it's telling me that it, the, the people fighting to get the price down is, is weak. Now they're fighting, they're a little bit stronger. But look at the balance versus the height over there. Is it evenly balanced? No. Between that area and that area. It's fairly evenly balanced. Okay? Which means, what is the global trend telling me? We're going up. So we're going up. I called a buy. I didn't hesitate, okay? And as you go on, you're going to start marking these up. So, guys, we pretty much used up the hour. And let's have a look at this next week again. Because I think then we'll dive in this a little bit more so that you guys can get a better idea. Because I don't want to rush through it and I don't want to just leave this year. But now you guys have got an idea of what it is we want to be looking at. First thing, we want to be able to identify what? An impulse versus impulse. a correction. correction. Once we have that, we can start looking at speed, speed, projection, and depth. Okay. So next week, we'll be touching projection. I think everybody understands how speed works. Give me a one in the chat if that statement is correct. Uh, I'm in right guys so that's it for the hour um, let's maybe take two three questions and then we're going to say good night all right thank you very much uh Rudo. truly you are showing us how simple trading can be wow this is unbelievable <laughs> all right so if you have any questions please bring it up as we see how we do the house to attend to our questions you could just raise your hand, we will unmute you and allow you to ask your question. I'll drop it in the question area or the chat area rather. If you're with us on Facebook, drop it uh, in the comments area. We will ensure your questions are well attended to. Yes, any question, please. This is Rudo, truly teaching us how to trade like the machine, how to take profit from the cryptos like the machine. All right, yes, go ahead. Is there any question? Okay, Shion Ola has a question. Okay, can I, let, let's hear you, let's hear you, please. Share one Okay, let me unmute share one 
show. Okay, please unmute yourself and go ahead with your question, show. Show you've good evening, you've sir. Been unmuted. Okay, yeah, you're welcome, sir. Yeah, How you, actually, uh, I was actually very excited with this uh, training because uh, I've been looking forward to this uh, training because uh, with this understanding, I want to actually know how, when to enter and when to exit a trade. Well, the thing is, uh, I would like to ask, sometimes there, there are you know, some movements that uh, happens in, let's say, some minutes and seconds, and before you know it, your trade is actually going the other way around. Like sometimes I, I, I tried uh, uh, trading using a uh, futures trading, and I bought my fingers a few a few times, you know, when obviously we're actually at the uptrend, yeah. and before you know it, it's actually going back. So that has been a very big issue for me. So that's what I want to ask. Uh, are there mechanics that one can use to be able to identify the point of exit and the point of entry? Yes. Um, the, the thing is, there's no one sentence. That's what I, I come back to earlier. And that's why we consistently keep on doing these webinars. The one hard thing about trading is like learning to play an instrument. Who of you guys know how to play guitar? And then if you do, maybe just tell me if you play a music or guitar or piano, how many lessons, just an educated guess, how many lessons did you go for? Or how many hours have you learned to actually play that instrument? And sadly, the same is going to be for for trading as well, Sean. Uh, you're never gonna you're never gonna get it in one sitting, and there's not that one rule that I can give you that's gonna tell you how to know or to exit. What I'm trying to teach you guys today is the foundations and understanding where you are in what type of market. Once you grasp this, we can move over to the next point on on how to look at entries and and, and, and further dive into it. But if I jump to the advanced part of it immediately, it's going to really go over everybody's head. Meaning that, you know, the things that I see, the hidden things that I see before I understand why I want to take the trade, is gonna be, it's going to be blind to you because you don't understand the basics. Which means I will not look for an entry in an impulse because that's a scary place price can go up and down the candles are big i want to look for an entry in a correction it's an easier place to manage but i don't want my entry to stay in that correction for weeks at an end so one thing i want to ask you uh before we move further on you're saying you're trading futures um just as a and i don't want to put you on the spot but how accurate are you trading on normal spot? How how regular do you trade normal spot, and how how what is your profitability? Would you say you'll you've got an eighty percent accuracy, seventy percent, fifty percent? How accurate are you? Because that I'm more worried about at the moment. Can you maybe just quickly type there in the in the chat? What do you what do you guess? It's not a it's not a hard rule. I just want an idea of how accurate are you in your trade taking. Did we lose him? No, he's still there. So the reason I'm asking this is if you've got an accuracy, which means if I take 10 trades and I win eight of 10 trades consistently, then you can start trading futures. But if you're taking five trades or 10 trades, you're winning five trades, maybe futures are not the place for you. 60% futures are definitely not the place for you just yet. Stick with me. I'll take you through all that, all that you need to know on these lessons to get you there. But I would suggest maybe take the spot trade because it's more forgiving. If you get it wrong, you still own the coin. You can still sell it at a later age. But if you go leveraged, yo, one little move in the wrong direction in your account is white, buddy. So please be careful about that. 
And I would suggest that everybody just reflect to how much, how many accurate trades they take a week, because you need to be in the 80s before you can really start trading futures. That is going to help you because remember, trading needs to be fun. And if you're losing or the market's taking your money unnecessarily, all the fun goes away. And then learning to trade actually becomes a drag. And, and it's the same as playing guitar or, or, any, or any instrument out of it. They don't teach you the hardest song on the day one. They teach you the easiest song, maybe using only three notes, so that you can feel that you're accomplishing something and keep you motivated. And then through time, as you progress, you can dive into deeper things. Guys, the things that I can teach you, oh, it's crazy. Let's first get the basics down, and I promise you we're going to grow with these lessons. Uh, maybe we can have another stab at a quick another question. Thank you very much, uh, FS Queen. Please go ahead, unmute yourself, and talk to us. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Rido, we are so grateful. I'm very excited about uh, this trading of the thing. Um, please, I just want you to clarify on uh, how to set our stop loss because uh, I think I did about 8% down on my new and over the night I woke up, I was kicked out of the market and I know this morning you told us when to get in, but see the profit going, I'm a kind of, uh, I really, <laughs> I'm feeling losing out. So how do we set our stop loss so that uh, when the market is retracing, we are not kicked out before the time. Okay, the easiest way that you can do this, and this mm -hmm. is literally the easiest way. Remember now, you understand speed, okay? I've now just explained to you guys how speed works. So let's use this one over here. If that is our general trend line, okay? And we are saying that price is going to stay on to this trend. FX Queen, you, you, you with me at this moment? That's the trend. You're in an agreement. So if I put a stop limit, and I'm just going to use a normal stop limit line, and let's say we buy the buy zone. Let's just put the buy zone in there. There's the buy zone that we called. Okay, so I'm just going to do that mark at the buy box. So if that is our buy zone, and we called it roughly over there. I know it wicked a little bit lower, but that was where I put my stop line. If the market's going to hold trend, do we know exactly how the market's going to move to the dollar ever? No. But what do we know? If price is going to continue on on our trend, and I'm going to say this, and I want you guys to repeat this. The trend's your friend until it bends. Edward, the trend's your friend until it bends. We're going to sign off now, okay? So if I'm at this candle... So I'm at that candle. Nothing else has been printed. How far can that candle go down and still be okay for me? Right up to that line and that level there. Make sense, guys? So let's zoom in. Where can this area be? If that orange line is the current candle, let's move it up there. Where should my stop be? My stop should be there. If that's my red candle over there, where should my stop be? My stop should be there. Because I don't want to be stopped out while this thing is still moving the trend. Because you never know when it's going to come to test that line. But you know it is going to test that line. So if we move over to NEO and just look at NEO in, 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 the, in the idea. We didn't break any trend. So if this is the NEO that we've got over here. And we bought this. This is our trend. Okay. That is our trend. You with me? Yes. Okay, we bought Neo at $23. So we get stopped out. What does that mean if it immediately goes back in there? What do you do? You buy back right on that line. And this is where it's scary. So if you miss it out, you get stopped out unnecessarily, you buy back right on that line. But what do we have now? We've got a new trend. So now you bought right back there. So what do we want to do? If this is the candle, and, and, and the thing with trading is you're never going to have one rule.
that helps you at, on everything. There's my new stop limit. So even if I bought back, my stop limit can't move up now because I'm probably going to need time to take me to at least six o'clock for me to be able to move my stop up to that level. I hope it helps FX Queen. FX Queen, are you still here? Let's get to hear from you and comment here. Okay, uh, we've got a yes from her. All right, thank you very much, Rudo, for that clarification. That was truly very important. Remember one thing, guys, with trading, there's no one thing that always plays out exactly. We chart, we draw these lines 20 times a day. Sometimes that is the trend. And then you get stopped out if you're too greedy. So what I do is I look at this area and I say, if that is my entry, I'm still willing to let this thing run for as long as I want. So I won't necessarily start moving my stop up too crazy. And another thing, the last thing that you can start using is now you know, what is that? Is that an impulse or correction? Is that an impulse or a correction? Blended candles. I would always want to have one correction between me and where prices, especially for that. Because once that wicks below this correction, I then know the trend's turning on me. But we'll dive into this some more, guys, and uh, and we'll have some more time. We're running out of time now. We're 10 past. Edward, thank you, guys, and have a lovely day. And uh, see you guys next week, same time. Thank you very much, Rudo. Thank you, and thank you again. We truly appreciate that. Uh, please, we need to go to the chat area now and type thank you to Rudo, please, because we can't pay him for what he's doing right now. No, nobody can pay him. Please, let's go to the chat area and type thank you, Rudo. All right, truly, thank you, Rudo, and uh, I say we love you. All right, we appreciate your time. I'm not taking it for granted. All right, and uh, no one here, I repeat, no one here can pay you for your time. You know how busy your schedule is because it's not easy to pull you um, a very, very great trader to come and teach exactly what you taught us. Now, just imagine, Rudo has gone ahead to demystify um, so, some great area, okay, in, in, in crypto trading. All right, once again, we appreciate. Please, if you think you got value uh, from tonight's uh, webinar, do well to invite your friends to this place on, mo on Monday, 6 p.m. GMT plus one. Let's do it again because we are out for one thing, raising billionaires in party lives. Thank you, Rudo, and thank you everyone for coming around. Let's do it again in another seven days. Good night. Cheers, guys. And God bless.